This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellecare.com. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Uniquely Feminine, Fertility to Menopause with Dr. Stephanie Pina on Wednesday, December 9th at 7.30 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. Dr. Tom Roselle live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Roselle live. This is Dr. Tom Roselle live in studio waiting to take your phone calls on any subject that you have in mind. Perhaps you've had a problem. You've tried, you've applied, you've done what you know how to do, and you've come up with the same old, same old. You know, guess what? You still got the problem? Well, here, call me, 888-630-9625. 888 Love to talk to you on anything that is a question that you haven't had answered. So let's kind of go through it. You know, tis the season, right? It's coming up. We're in the process of scurrying around to the malls. We just went through Black Friday, which is extending to today. And everybody's kind of manic, and we're catching as catch can. We've already started the, you know, the fattening of America, if you will, with the holiday of Thanksgiving and all the things that we eat that we normally wouldn't eat. And we actually started at uh, Halloween with uh, the load of sugars that you start putting in your body. And, and we just, you know, did it again with the pies and the cakes and the cookies and all those things and the foods and coming up on Christmas and all the holiday parties. And then... In January, New Year's Eve, and we and then we wonder why we get the flu and we get sick and we feel lousy and we break down and yada, 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 yada. There's, there's a clue here someplace. Uh, the clue, you know, it's a clue. You changed your life habits. Something is different. It's called gluttony and eating things that you normally don't eat. And, you know, this. think about it, right? If you have a dog or a cat or an animal or a pet of any kind, would you knowingly give that animal all kinds of junk and just allow it to eat everything that it possibly could possibly eat and stuff it, you know, unless you're getting ready uh, ready to take it to slaughter and put it on a spit and kind of turn it slowly and that's going to be your next meal. I don't know, just saying. But think about it. Think about what we're doing to ourselves. And I know it's the Christmas season and it's the holidays and it's all those things. And where do I get off talking to you about the stuff that you're jamming in your throat? Well, you know what? If I didn't do that, then I would kind of lose my reputation as an arguable sort that wants to draw your attention to the things that you're doing for you. But before I get in that, we're going to talk about that today with a couple other things that I want you to worry about, you know, inflammatory processes. And we're going to talk about structural care and what that really means and some things that you don't know about. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about something that's coming up that the Roselle Center for Healing and Caring for Others. The 501c3 Virginia Foundation are teaming up to do in just a couple weeks, uh, about three weeks from now. It's actually the Sunday before Christmas. It's going to be on December the 20th. And what is it? It's the third annual Children's Jubilee, Children's Christmas Festival. And Roselle Center for uh, Healing and Caring for Others have brought shelters together. These shelters are homeless uh, children and mothers, and uh, one shelter is battered and abused women and children, and setting up a spectacular and amazing day. It's it's about four to five hours long, and these kids get to meet Santa Claus, and they get gifts, and they get cards, and they get all kinds of things that they in a banquet that you can't imagine. They dance, and there's music, and it's it's a night to remember. It's absolutely amazing. But you know what? We need your help to pull it off. Caring for Others is a 501c3. What I'd like you to do, I'd like you to go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. And just scroll down about halfway through the page, and you're going to see the website. And they've hooked up. Caring for Others has logged into a GoFundMe site, and they can use 
all of your donations, whether it's 10 bucks or it's $1,000, whatever you'd like to do, please help this night become spectacular and so they can continue to do it year after year. This is the third annual. It's amazing. WHUT uh, TV will be there. PBS, they're going to bring cartoon characters. There's uh, uh, as I said, dancing. There's going to be a DJ, Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. There's going, the kids get sleep sacks and they get dowels and they get uh, gift cards and so forth and so on. But we need your help to pull this off. So if you would go right now, today, go to Roselle Care. Dot com that's r o s e l l e c a r e dot com and go down halfway and you're going to see the GoFundMe and there's a video there by the way you can check it out you can see last year's event and uh, you can see what it's all about and then go to the site and donate it's really easy go click click and then put your credit card in there and uh, it's a secure site it's all good not a problem but we really 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 could help these kids so much more if we get your help. To help us, give me a call triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Let's talk a little bit about the fattening of the world, and not just the United States, but you know what? Last year showed that more than half of the world's obese people, half, just came from ten countries: United States, China, India, Russia, Brazil, Mexico, Egypt, Germany. Pakistan and Indonesia. Wow, isn't that amazing? And guess who heads up the list? The United States. Yep, we're fatter than anybody else. We are obese, like you can't believe. And then you wouldn't think China, but you know, I've been to China twice and I really like China a lot. But guess what? You see all the American fast food stores there. You see McDonald's and you see Kentucky Fried and you, it goes on. I mean, it's crazy. You know, you would think that it would be Eastern food and, you know, you have vegetables and you have this. But no, the American entrepreneur has set in. You know, years ago, I used to tell people, we don't have to go to combat with our enemies. All we got to do is send in our fast food and it's going to be slow and insidious, but we'll kill them. And so this is what we're doing. We're doing this to all these countries. And, you know, everybody's getting fatter because of so obese Americans and out of this, right, obese Americans accounted for about over 14 percent of the world's obese people. And China, China and India together, you know, with, uh, you know, everybody else, they accounted for about 15 percent of the total. So. Here's the U.S. health officials are saying that America is inching up more and more, both in the belt line and also just generalized fat. Have you ever heard the concept of a thin, fat person? Here, let me tell you what that means. That means on the outside, they look slender. On the inside, they got fat around the organ systems. And it just kind of infiltrates all the way through. That's why we have such high levels of heart disease and cardiovascular problems and cancers and so forth. So with all of that, you see increased rates of what? Heart disease and hypertension, diabetes, and you know, besides being just generally fat, um, 59% of adult Americans, 59%, 59% of adults, 59% of adults take at least one drug every day. 59%. The body wasn't designed to live that way. You were not supposed to be a drug deficiency. You were supposed to do things to protect your body. But because we are so fat and eating the things that we shouldn't be eating, you know, my mantra, sugar, sodas, coffee, black teas, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten additives, preservatives, so forth and so on, and now GMOs, we're doing it. We're doing it to ourselves. There was an interesting article in the New York Times and said that about 38% of Americans were fat, and that was in 2013, and it's going up, and it gets worse and worse, and it's kind of jumping by about 3% every year. So pretty soon, now that we're at, you know, we're at that high level, what are we going to do? I mean, you talk about the health care burden on everybody. You know, there's a, a paper published, and it basically indicated that you know, with a reduction in trans fat and small increases in fiber and get rid of the sodas and all the junk that we're talking about, you know, we could drop the national debt. And it actually is very true because the biggest dollar we spend is on health care. And it's not prevention health care. You know what prevention is? Take this pill and call me in the morning. You know what prevention is? Let's go do a mammography. You know what pre prevention is? It's all the medical interventions instead of teaching people how to eat and, pe and teaching people how to exercise and how to st get rid of the stress patterns and how to do things a little bit at a time. Slow, 
incremental pieces that can save your life and slim out your children and get them outside and start working and so forth. I love the commercial on television where the mother short circuits the house. So all the the uh, devices that these kids are watching, you know, kind of fail. So they go, oh, we might as well go play basketball. Good idea. You know, get out and go for a walk. Oh, my God. Had you ever think about that? That activity might actually help. Well, Guess what? According to the American Heart Association scientific session this year, fat children as young as eight are now showing signs of heart disease. Eight years old, heart disease. It used to be that we found it in teens and, you know, like 16, 17, 18. And they were saying that, you know, when uh, soldiers were coming back from combat areas, they did autopsies, they start seeing hardening of the arteries and so forth. Now it's eight years old, eight years old, you know. And these are based on MRI scans of the heart. Of you know, it's not okay. You see what we're doing? Do you see what's happening to our our country, to our children? And you can't think. And we have hyperreactive kids. I mean, we can go on. We can talk about this like for four days. And but when you really get in and start looking at the seriousness of this, one child who dies because of neglect of providing the best food possible because they want to get hooked on Twinkies and Ho-Hos and, and, and Dunkin' Donuts and all that stuff, and they don't want to eat anything that's good for them, or their parents provide snacks you know, to bribe them, and it's all junk and sugar-coated, all kinds of crap. You know, it's not, it, See, we're doing it to ourselves, we're doing it to our children, we're doing it to our future generation because the genetic model is simply this – Genetic traits are stimulated by your environment. And if your environment is horrible, it sucks like this, guess what? We're creating a disaster to come far more than we could possibly even begin to predict at this point. But it's coming because the statistics are there. Why am I getting on this tirade? Simply because of the fact that in my practice, I see kids walking in who have diseases that are preventable that are structurally not working the way it's supposed to. Their brains aren't firing. They're on Ritalin and Adderall and other drugs like that to calm their nervous system down, as well as parents and everyone else. It's like, come on already. There's so many things that we can do without spending money. You don't have to go to your doctor. You just got to get smart and quit being deluded by Fifth Avenue Marketing. It's like one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. You know, food advertisement and false nutritional advertising views, if you will, there's clearly strategies out there that are meant to put money in other people's pockets and put fat on your waistline and in your arteries. And it really irritates me, as you can tell. I, you know, I, if I don't say something about it, particularly coming into the season, I'm not, you know, the Grinch that wants to take Christmas from you. I want, I'm the guy that wants to celebrate Christmas and, you know, have fun with everybody and enjoy it and have the things that we know and then teach you how to really start out a brand new life, not just a new year to move things forward. But here's the deal. You know, part of the problem is lack of focus on educating us, all of us, our children, us, and our, our parents, and everybody else. And, you know, junk food ads not only confuse us, but they completely, completely miseducate our children. You know, think about it. You know, uh, McDonald's, there, I said it, it came out of my mouth, right? They bribe you by bringing you in and say, I'm going to give you this little gift, and their foods are, I mean, do you know how much fecal parts that they allow in their hamburgers? Do you know how much sugar is in their buns? Do you know how much that, you know, have you ever thought about when you want a French fry, that it's a McDonald's French fry, that it's got to be a McDonald's French fry? I'm going to let you do the data. There was, you know, there was a, a movie that was done years ago of this guy who was, you know, you've probably heard me talk about it before, this guy that was going to do nothing but eat McDonald's for three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Guess what? He had to stop after two weeks. You know why? Because he was dying. He was, he was dying. He had to stop. His doctor said, if you don't stop, you're dead because all this chemistry has changed. So if that's the case, guess what it's doing to you? Trust me, this is not okay. The fattening of America, industry health partnerships, and that's what we're going to talk about is industry health partnerships that need to be promoting health, not promoting disease. And up until now, they're promoting disease processes. We're going to touch a little bit about that when we come back. But we're also going to get into some other things. But meanwhile, I'd love to take your phone calls at 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live right here every Sunday, 12 noon. Tell your friends. We'll be right back. Don't go away. 
This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health, Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com. At the Roselle Center for Healing, we care about your health and want to help you take your health in a new direction, far from drugs and surgery. Knowledge is the key to optimal wellness and control of your health. We offer free health education on chronic health conditions and natural integrative medicine treatments. Attend Uniquely Feminine, Fertility to Menopause with Dr. Stephanie Pina on Wednesday, December 9th at 7.30 p.m. Space is limited, so register today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit rosellecare.com. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rozell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rozell live. Indeed, I'm in studio, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. I've got a topic and three or four of them, but uh, by the way, I want to talk about your stuff and see what we can do to make a difference in your life. It's coming up to the season, and we said, unfortunately, we're in a place where we're going to make damage the keynote not love and merriment, but damage to your body. Yeah, that's right, because you know what? You're eating all kinds of garbage. It's putting in your body and it's putting weight on you. And we're sitting there around, you know, 38% to 40% fat across the board. 38 to 40% fat. Is that what we want? 38% of Americans are fat? Yep, you bet. And growing and growing. And that's why we've got, you know, resistant problems with hypertension and diabetes and arterial placking and inflammatory diseases and autoimmune uh, disease and so forth. So what's a person supposed to do? Well, the first thing you do is you educate yourself about what's really going on. And remember that you're being inundated with advertising. You know, industry health partnerships, we talked about that just before the break. And let's, we can go back a little bit. Like 2003, the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry came under fire and, you know, they had an agreement. Who they have an agreement with? Coca-Cola Foundation. Coca-Cola, yeah. And, you know, they said that Coke would distribute educational messages on behalf of the dental association, the Pediatric Dental Association. Really? Really? Is that like having the, the, the fox in the hen house or even worse? Come on. I mean, don't, don't people get that? I mean, look behind. Remember what I said? Look to see who has what to gain and who wrote the check. And, you know, this is prime example of that. It's like, it's unbelievable. You know, and you go on and you look at everything like that and the relationships that have been evoked over time. So they finally confronted, you know, the dental association about, uh, gross conflict, do you think? Really? And, you know, the University of Colorado School of Medicine announced that it was returning. It was actually going to give back a million bucks, you know, to Coca-Cola after it was revealed that the money had been, you know, there and, you know, by this advocacy group. And it was like, oh, come on, people. I mean, we're not that stupid, I think. Are we? I don't, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Are, are we that dumb? Well, you know, the thing of it is, is that so many of us are in Fifth Avenue Marketing and Big Pharma. They're hoping that you're that stupid. And, you know, when we're fattening ourselves up with corn and soy and wheat and rice and all those things, and that's the mainstay of our diet, they may have, a, you know, a point there. Well, you know what? Mary, thank you for holding. How can I help you? Hi. I just love everything you're saying, absolutely everything. Thank you. Um, I... I did want to make one differential. I, I mean, I do think the soft drinks need to go, and uh, the portion sizes are just amazing. Um, but I, I also the need for good fat, you uh, bet. like avocado and uh, some of those, but just a little bit. You don't need a lot to to make it really great. I wanted to talk. I, I'm a cancer survivor, and um, I had a choice of going on all raw food at one point after my operation. I had ovarian cancer. And um, and going and going or uh, listening to a woman named Sally Fallon who wrote a book called Nourishing Traditions. 
that was all about what our grandparents, great grandparents, yep. how they ate. Mary, unfortunately, if you can move it a little bit, we're coming up to yeah, a break. Yeah, it, it was just changed my life. I chose Sally's diet, uh, the good meats with no uh, antibiotics and, uh, and good fats. And uh, and raw milk. Absolutely, you know what? Well, raw Mary, milk. <laughs> yep. If you go if you go back to diet, see the thing that you have to worry about is raw milk's great, but it's got to be organic raw milk simply Absolutely. because of the fact that you know you got to stay away from the antibiotics, which is going to cause some of the fattening we were talking about. You have to be careful with the steroids. You have to be careful with all the things that they're exposed to. And you, you're right. You're absolutely right on. We need fats. We need high levels of omega-3 and 9s, not the 6s. The 6s are things that are going to destroy the body. We need CLAs in our body and DHEA and so forth. Those are critical. And you get those by avocados, which are very alkalizing, by the way. You get those with you know cold-pressed raw olive oils. And, and there's tons of stuff and choices around there. We need to do that. Coconut oil is, is, uh, you know, is another one that we use in our practice with patients for uh, oh, yeah. brain deterioration dysfunction. She actually gives her cows the coconut. Yep. It's, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> so, an, it's yeah, important. Just, uh, but free-range animals are fantastic. You're right on. The, and let's look, let's look, doctor, at the uh, Amish, at these Amish children hey, I grew that up, are I, so strong. I grew up in that environment. Oh, you wow. know, I grew, Western New York State, and, you know, we had in uh, Cherry Creek, New York, we had a really large Amish community, and you know we used to get our our uh, Thanksgiving turkey from them. And you could actually, when you brought the turkey home, the breast was yellow and covered mm -hmm. with fat because mm -hmm. that's the way it's supposed to be. Unfortunately, you know we don't do that because By we the mess way, with uh, that was I was 47 years old. I'm 61 now, and that was uh, ovarian cancer. I never took the chemo, and I'm here today. Absolutely. Mary, thank you for your call. Appreciate it. Happy holiday, my friend. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah coming up. And I had a real cute uh, uh, cartoon that was put in front of me. It's the Grinch, right? And he's got a bag full of uh, candles in front of him. And he's looking at all these candles and he's simply saying, what was I thinking? <laughs> What were we thinking about a lot of different things? We're coming up to a break. I want to remind you, go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Go down about halfway. Check out the GoFundMe site for the Children's Jubilee coming up third annual. They need your help. They need your donation. Please do it. Do it today. We'll be right back after some important messages. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x-ray? Now consider a simple, non-invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Dr. Tom Rosell Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell Live. Yes, I'm in studio, 888-630-9625, 9625 That's how you find me. And by the way, when I'm not here and you want to talk to me, easy ways email. Go to drtomrosell.com. D R T O M R O S E L L E dot com, Dr. Tom Rosell dot com. Want to focus you on something, and that's the third annual Children's Christmas Gala. And uh, Roselle Center for Healing and Caring for Others, a Virginia based 501c3 foundation, is teaming up to do third annual amazing banquet gathering fun party for kids and their parents who are homeless. And it's an amazing event. It's one of the things that just, when I walk into that event on the 20th of December, my heart will cheer, I'll cry, I will, but we need your help. We really do. So what I'd like you to do is go to, the easy way is go to Roselle Care, R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E, Roselle Care. Dot com. 
go about, so I think it's about 40% of the way down. I'm looking at it right now. And it says, Caring for Others LTD, third annual Children's Christmas Gala. And, you know, help us share Christmas with these homeless children and their families. And there's a site. It's a GoFundMe site. It's GoFundMe.com slash Caring for Others. But all you got to do is go to RoselleCare.com, click Donate Now, and you're going to extend Christmas to some amazing children. They are wonderful. Last year we had a ball. We danced with them all night long, and Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus was there. Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus came in on a uh, uh, a fire truck. And, you know, these, there's a big Christmas train that if you go to RoselleCare.com, you'll see it there. And if you click through, you're going to see a video of everything that took place. Trust me, this is a very worthwhile event to be involved in. Please help us. Donate now. GoFundMe.com slash Caring for Others. But the easy way is RoselleCare.com. Let's go to the phones. Linda, thank you for being patient. How can I help you? Dr. Rizal, I'm a huge fan of yours, and just I'm caring for someone who has um, AML, acute myeloid leukemia. Um, what are some, th- some things we could do uh, to support him and his immune system? Okay, so there's a, there's a lot of naturopathic medicine and acupuncture and manipulative care combined together are going to be the things that are going to be the most supportive. So what you need to look at is eliminating first the inflammatory levels, the toxicity levels of the body, getting those things out of there. You have to support the intestinal system and immune function, the thymus, the fight-flight system, the adrenal system, uh, pancreas, and so forth, and spleen. And once you do that by first diet and bringing up the, the energetics, uh, things will begin to improve dramatically. I really, it's individualistic a lot, but let me give you two go-to organizations that, um, that we deal with. One is the, uh, Cancer Centers of America, and they're easily found just by doing that. Cancercentersofamerica.com, and there's one in Philadelphia, there's one in Chicago, there's in Arizona. I think they've got five throughout the country, but they're very useful. There's a clinic called ISIL's Clinic. I S S E L, ISIL. ISOLs is how you'll find it, clinic, and there's a tremendous amount of information out of there. We've sent patients there, referred uh, out to that area. Uh, there's stuff overseas. But having said that, those are two good go-to resources that I would encourage you to uh, to look up and so forth. But having said that, alkaline diet, start with that first. Uh, support the system uh, that way with a lot of natural proteins. If you have to be careful with kidney function, if somebody has a failing kidney uh, profile where their uh, their GFR levels low, or you're starting to see uh, creatinine levels break down or bun levels break down on the uh, laboratory test, you want to make sure that the proteins are now more veg- vegetable proteins than they are animal proteins because the uh, the inflammatory levels can cause a cause a problem. Uh, but having said that. Uh, if you do that, if you bring up the energetics, you support the body through acupuncture, you detox the system, you put the body in a low-stress environment. I've seen so many of these people, and like I said, we refer to these other areas because there's things out there that really, really work and begin to turn things around. Now, if they're going through traditional uh, chemotherapeutics, uh, things of that nature, then uh, you have to look at it a little differently, but then it becomes more of a supportive base through nutrition, supportive base through acupuncture. But um, in today's environment, there's so much that can be done. The body will heal itself, just like our, our first caller was talking about in her particular situation. If you go to uh, organic, free-range, natural foods, mostly vegetables, uh, the protein should be just a small part of it, but natural vegetables, the body begins to respond beautifully. Uh, if I can be of help, uh, Linda, you just uh, send me a note at uh, com and give me more specifics, and I'll tell you uh, who I would refer someone to and specifically what steps. If they're in the area, have them call the office. Uh, more than happy to, to help either by arm's length or directly. So I hope that's useful to you. Very much. It is. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My pleasure. Sally. Oh, hi. Hi, uh, Sally. Good afternoon. I wanted to know about the direct relationship between caffeine and high BP. I know a lot of studies have been made, but I really wanted to know, uh, which I've never been able to find, and you probably know, 
One caffeine milligram raises the systolic BP by what amount, what percentage? Well, it, that's the thing. It, is, it, it varies for, uh, for everybody. Uh, what I can tell... Just te- generally. Just well, generally. Well, I can tell you this much. Some people are not sensitive to it. Some people are, are allergic to caffeine. Some people are allergic to coffee. The acidity in the coffee or in, in any uh, element that has to, whether it's uh, chocolate or whether it's uh, coffee or whether it's green tea or anything else that carries it. So... You know, what happens is that, you know, caffeine, although it's a naturally occurring substance in so many different things, uh, it can cause side effects, and high blood pressure is one of them. The The easiest way without giving you a direct proportion, because that's where you get in trouble, you know, uh, is the... Uh, the government will tell you that consumption of about 400 milligrams of caffeine a day is okay. It's not a problem. Well, it depends on the person. You know, you give somebody who is sensitive and a little bit of caffeine is way too much. Uh, there's more caffeine in green tea than there's a cup of coffee. So what's the difference? Why can people tolerate the caffeine in green tea and they can't tolerate it in coffee? It's because the Caffeine in coffee is a fast-acting, reactive, right-now type of caffeine, where the caffeine in green tea is a slow-modulated uptake, Where and there's the difference. Your tolerance level is affected by age and body mass, your weight and other health conditions. If your adrenal system is all messed up, caffeine will put you to sleep. Is There's a rebound reaction that takes place. I'm not avoiding answering your, your question specifically, but there's so much more to it than just that. Uh, you know, 600 milligrams for a lot of people is like over the top, it's way too much, but that's, you know, that's, again, it's it's just a general commentary, and when you take our society today, uh, and by the way, how much is that? How much is 600? I'm, I'm realizing I'm talking very quickly. 600 milligrams of coffee or, or, or caffeine is about six cups of coffee. All right, so that's a lot of stuff. Most people can't handle, you know, a cup of coffee sometimes in, in, without being jittery and being able to shut down. You give me a cup of coffee, I'm going to go to sleep. It's because my fight flight system is constantly on overdrive, and a little bit of, you know, it's just like the straw that breaks the camel's back. So your tolerance level is affected by, again, your body weight, any and the health conditions, um, you know, your body mass, and so forth and so on. So what we have to uh, do is we have to make sure that. Uh, we balance out, you know, the the coffee or the caffeine or the green tea and so forth, because caffeine by itself is dehydrating. You know, it, it pulls water out of the system. Uh, it's it's gonna it can cause headaches because of the, the dehydration. It can cause jitters, uh, the irritability. It can cause confusion, believe it or not. And you know, uh, the diarrhea if if the bowel is irritable to begin with, a cup of coffee will send you to the bathroom very very quickly. Increase your heart rate and the the firing of your heart. It can cause your muscles to hurt, ache deep, deep ache and hurt. You know because of that. Uh, it can cause women to have br- uh, very painful breasts and actually can cause nodularities within the breast that are non malignant. But you can you can get a fibrocystic problem. One of the things that you do with any woman who has any kind of breast nodularity is you get them off a of coffee. Period. End of story. And any kind of tea that has uh, high levels of caffeine in it, get them off of it. Uh, does it increase blood pressure? You bet it does. Uh, it'll jack it up way, way, way high, but it has a very significant effect on the central nervous system. Uh, you know, does it wake you up? Yes. Does it seem to have your brain work a little clearer? Yes. But you have to look, you have to weigh it with the other processes that are end products. Anxiety, irritability, as I said, drowsiness, uh, withdrawals are headache and, uh, and tremors. You get somebody who's been uh, on caffeine or coffee for a period of time, you take them off of it, they're going to have a pounding headache like it's going out of style. It's like craziness. And you got to drink tons and tons of water. Remember, for every cup of coffee or something that has caffeine, you dehydrate your body by that much more water. So you got to drink a cup of water for it, and then you got to get the normal amount of water that's in your body to begin with. So again, I'm not avoiding a one-to-one ratio for you, but it's not you can't do that. You you have to look at each person. So, Can I ask about green tea because regular green tea has beneficial effects, but I understand that decaf, decaffeinated green tea doesn't have those same. That's absolutely correct. You're right. You're absolutely right. You don't it's want it. Worth, so it's not worth drinking the decaffeinated tea. That no, but white tea, white tea has the same benefits of green tea. And it doesn't have the side effects. So it you, doesn't have a lot of caffeine in it. White tea has no caffeine. 
So no caffeine? No, it's almost, uh, almost a, just a residual. That's the whole benefit of white tea. So if uh, you want to get the antioxidant effects, uh, make yourself a strong cup of white tea, and you're going to get the antioxidants. And as I said, green tea, some people can handle. Now, there are many, many different forms of green tea. And, you know, in the Orient, in Asia... I said the Orient, huh? that, that dates me. Uh, in Asia, when they drink green tea, it's a very mild green tea. It's very light. In this country, we want everything strong because we want the impact of that caffeine. And what they actually do, when I was, when I was at the Beijing um, uh, Medical Qigong Exchange Institute, and it's in northwest uh, Beijing, uh, we had tea. But what they, they did is they made the tea, then they poured off the first tea and then put the tea back in. And so they got rid of all any kind of residue. They got rid of a lot of the, the, the caffeine in it. And then they were able to enjoy the antioxidant effects of the, of the green tea. So this is a subject that is dependent on the person. It depends on where you get the stuff from. But let me tell you this. If you're going to drink anything, you want to make sure that it's organic. You want to make sure that it's not strong, that it's at a low level. And if you're going to air, air to green tea and get rid of the coffee, not one of the things. If you're going to drink coffee, you do 100% organic Kona coffee or you do 100% organic Blue Mountain coffee. Both of those are more alkaline. They're, uh, they're closer to neutral at 7 than, uh, than their counterparts. So that's where you start from. So I hope that's useful. I know that's a subject that we can talk about. I know you wanted racials, but I won't do that for you because it, it depends on the person. It depends on their environment. It depends on their drinking. Are they drinking a cup of coffee occasionally or, and are they sensitive to it? Then any caffeine is not good for them regardless of where it comes from, whether it's chocolate or, you know, cocoa beans or, uh, Tea, green tea, black tea doesn't make any difference. They need to they need to avoid it completely. But coffee generally is a uh, something that's going to cause irritability. It's going to cause caffeine spikes in the body. It's going to cause that fight flight system to be stressed, and you become addicted to it. As I said, if you suddenly stop drinking coffee uh, or things that have caffeine, in it, your head is going to pound. You know, unless you take certain precautions, and that's a lot of vitamin C, vitamin B, and tons of water. Sally, I hope that's uh, somewhat helpful. I appreciate your phone call. Thank you very much. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Love to take your call on any subject, and we're kind of tiptoeing our way through quite a few today. You know, going back to naturopathic medicine, and you know, we had one caller that uh, talked about leukemia. Uh, the approach in any cancers, you know, from herbal botanical preparations, dietary patterns, there's certain amino acids and minerals and so forth that need to be supported, certain homeopathics to upregulate. By the way, homeopathic, for those of you who don't you hear the term but you're not sure what it is, it's trace amounts of substances. And in true homeopathy, there are, uh, there's th- something we call constitutional types, and that's taking into consideration the person, who they are, how they are in their environment, and so forth, and it brings up their immune system. Everything else is known as a, as a therapeutic property, and it's, you know, the, there's fights within the homeopathic community. But, you know, one of these days we're going we're gonna to talk about that completely. But it basically what a homeopathic uh, preparation does, it strengthens the body's immune response promotes healing and pr- uh, promotes the body's equilibrium. Acupuncture is the same thing. One of the things that you need to do with any chronic debilitating disease, two things, manual manipulation, chiropractic care, acupuncture, dietary pattern would be the third, detoxification, you got to clear the system out, support the fight-flight system, the adrenal system. If you know you're sensitive to something straight off the bat, but there's ways of finding out, get rid of it. Don't put in, don't be hardhead. You know, get rid of these things. Don't, don't, just don't. Don't do it because you're, you know, you're going to not get what you thought you were going to get. You know, we've talked about the inflammatory pyramid of things. It's, you know, how acidic is your body? And that's really what it's all about. The more acid your body is, the more you're going to have an inflammatory process. You know, what are inflammatory agents? Sugar, so does coffee, black teas, fast foods, fried foods, alcohol, gluten additives, preservatives, and GMOs. Not okay. You want to make sure that you have tons of vegetables in your diet. You want to have some fruits, 
primarily berries. You want to make sure you know that you have some beans, and uh, if you're going to do rices, the wild rices and a little bit of brown rice. You want to make sure that you have nuts and seeds and and uh, fresh fish, high oily fish are the best ones for you. A couple, two to six times a week, really? Yeah, absolutely. That's what you want to do. If you're going to do uh, meats, mammal products, make sure they're free range and they don't have any junk in them. They've been fed organic or exposed to organic stuff. We need to go back to the diet of our ancestors. They were healthier than we were and not as fat. That's how we started the program off today. Coming up to a break, and we're going to conclude with a couple things. We still have a couple more of you. I'm going to try to get to you before we're done. Having said that, don't go away. We'll be right back. Do you have frequent headaches, popping jaws, or constant earaches because of TMJ disorder? Hi, it's John Fredericks. TMJ disorder is extremely uncomfortable. If you're in pain, let me tell you about Dr. Michael Chung in Northern Virginia. With over 20 years' experience in neuromuscular dentistry, Dr. Michael Chung has successfully treated his patients with TMJ disorder. Don't live with TMJ pain. Learn more about your options by calling Dr. Michael Chung today. He'll treat your TMJ disorder and help relieve your pain. In fact, his beautiful practice is designed to soothe patients the moment they arrive. This place doesn't feel like a dentist office. It's more like a spa, warm and welcoming. If you call 703-319-6990 right now and mention The John Frederick Show, you'll receive a complimentary consultation. Just call 703-319-6990 or visit bestandsmile.com. 105.9 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. Dr. Tom Rosell here. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live, as you do every Sunday, 12 o'clock noon Eastern Time. And depending on where else you are, you know, that you're listening, it could be 11, it could be 10, it could be 9, some of you even out in Hawaii. I mean, I'm impressed. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your notes and things that you send and asking questions and i'm always there for you so if you have anything that you want to ask and don't want to get on the air with me do it by going to drtomrosell.com that's d-r-t-o-m-r-o-s-e-l-l-e.com in addition please help us go fund me go fund me what are we doing that for? Well, Roselle Center for Healing and Caring for Others, a 501c3 foundation, are teaming up for the third annual Children's Christmas Party. And it's coming up on the 20th. And these are for homeless children and their parents. And we have something in the neighborhood this year, about 150 children that are going to be with us, plus their parents. And these folks have nothing. They're out in the streets. And there's a, a bunch of them, too, that are abused women and children, and we would like you to help us make their holiday season very, very special. I promise you, this is a event. If you want to see what it's all about, go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com. Go down about a third of the page or so, and you're going to see it. It's right there in front of you. You're going to see and click, and you'll see what last year was about. And Listen, if you can afford five bucks, do it. If you can afford 5000 do that. We really appreciate it, and Caring for Others will serve the community as it was meant and designed to do so. Bernice, how are you, my friend? Oh, hi. Uh, I'm fine. I, I hear you're pretty good, too. Huh? I'm doing great, man. Yeah. Um, I have a question. I'm 56, and I have uh, I bend a lot, you know, like when I'm cleaning, and my knees are starting to hurt. So what would I uh, use to help keep them healthy? Okay. Well, besides oil? Um, no. <laughs> So here's the deal. The knees are a direct result of all the muscles that go around it. So you have your thigh muscles. You have a muscle on the side called the iliotibial band. You have muscles on the inside, the ductors and the gracilis. You have a muscle over the top called the sartorius. You've got muscles in the back, the hamstrings, and so forth. Now, simply, what may be going on is a couple things. Either you're not active enough and you're not stretching enough to keep them, or you're getting some inflammatory levels. So because that's an active joint, it's going to uh, you're, you're going to be more noticeable there but also more importantly it could be the nerves from your low back that are going to these muscles that are not allowing them to fire properly if that's what it is it's not a matter of putting anything on it it's a matter of getting that treated and making sure that you know you go to somebody like a chiropractor down in Arizona you've got huge numbers of great naturopathic physicians you've got 
uh, osteopaths, go to somebody who does structural work and can give you the benefit of their expertise and get that scored away. Because if the nerve is irritated, chiropractic calls it subluxation, osteopathy calls it uh, spinal lesion. In either situation, it's the same thing. The nerve is not firing the way it's supposed to. So the target, the muscles that are surrounding that knee are not going to work. So now you have this inflammatory level building up and it's going to hurt. So I would do that. I would check that out. I would, uh, you know, get involved in a stretching class. I would take a real good look at your diet and see if you're, you know, you're eating things that are inflammatory. If they are, get rid of them and, you know, try those things first. But, you know, that's, that's where you start, kiddo. Now, if you want... I'm taking something called joint vibrance. It costs 50 bucks. Well, what's in it? Uh, con- uh, collagen, chondroitin, glucosamine, MSM, with type 1 and type 2 collagen. Well, if you, if you got degenerative disease already, that may give you some benefit. But the bottom line is it's a mechanical situation, and you have to make sure that the mechanics are working properly. So remember, if you listen to me over time, I've told you that every muscle in the body has an organ that it's connected to by way of several things. One is just the nervous system. As the nerves come out of the spine, they, they divide. One branch goes inside to the muscle. Another branch goes to the organ. And often the muscle's weak because the organ's not firing. Acupuncture channels, same thing, organ muscle. Blood supply reflexes, organ muscle. Now, if you want to put something just on the joint space, go get Tremel uh, or get Arnica gel and rub it on there. That should be useful in the short term. But n- meanwhile, you got to answer the, the question, why is that? Why is it there to begin with? And fix that. If you don't fix that, you're going to have a problem that's going to continue anyway. And now what you're doing is just putting symptoms out. But fix the underlying uh, problem, Bernice. And like I've said to you before, if you want a referral, give me a call. Hun, thank you. Merry Christmas. Take care of yourself. Richard. Thank you for calling. How can I help you? Yes, Dr. Rozelle. Some time back, a Chinese acupuncturist practicing here in Rockville, Maryland, told me that white tea lowers your body temperature. It, it's a, it is a cooling process because it doesn't have... In Chinese medicine, you have things that are hot or mm-hmm. things that are cooling. And so when you drink white tea, if for, for example, somebody like me who is on the go all the time, my body's on fire all the time. I'm hot, hot, hot. I benefit by white tea. I sit, and if I want to relax, I'm going to brew up a, a cup of white tea. I'm going to sit. I'm going to relax and listen to some music. And it actually ca- uh, calms my my body down. Actually, it will also help in weight loss. You know, it, it begins to help shed those extra grams of uh, fat that are building up and begin to strip things. But white tea does it. It is definitely a cooling herb, if you will use that. There are, for example, if, if you're going to use ginseng, there are, there's ginseng that's very hot and vibrant and perpetuating. There's ginseng that is dampening and softening. And you're getting the whole realm of herbal medicine. And we can go into many different things like that. But yes, you are correct. A white one, tea. One and further thing, Dr. O'Dell. Yes, sir. Uh, those people who may be interested in orthoscopic surgery on their knees, uh, my family physician said she had it and told me before I had it that she still had the same pain after, and that's the same thing for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little worse off than I was before I had it. The problem, here's the, here's the problem, Richard. What's going on is that it didn't solve the problem. The problem was the mechanical imbalance of the knee. If you fix the mechanical imbalance, by the way, your, your knee pain will go away. Love to help you. I know you're in Silver Spring. Give me a call and see what we can do to make a difference for you. We're coming up to the end of the program, unfortunately, way too fast as always, but we're here every Sunday, same time, same place on your dial. Uh, you know I'm here to help you. I'll do anything I can to make that happen. Don't forget, Caring for Others, go fund me. I'll see you next week, and we have more information for you at that time. Love you all. Bye. Bye.